Hello, I'm Ron Soyland. This is part six of making of a Fleming valve. Uh, remember from part five we had a leak in the tube, so we're going to start part six with repairing the leak and then we'll continue vacuuming the tube. Okay, I've got it back in the lathe. ahead and warm it up. Now this is a place where we can crack Pyrex. If I was just to go and start working on it, then we could crack it. So we'll warm it up with the annealing torch first. Bring the whole envelope up to um, on the order of um, 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. It just takes a few seconds for it to get up there with that, that hot gas around it. Alright, we're starting to flare, so we're hot enough. Now, it was right on the back side over here where we had the leak. So what I'm going to do is just heat that up. I'm going to use a piece. This is a small piece of glass that I've stretched out into a real fine capillary. And I'm just going to put a little glob of that on the back. And use that to seal the leak. But get it in there right. That looks good. Alright, let's put it back in the vacuum system. We'll cool it off. Okay, I've got it mounted back in there. I'm going to go ahead and open up the roughing valve again. And we'll test it. No leak. See, now the spark jumps to the wire, but it does not jump to the glass. And the top one, no leaks on the top. So we have a perfectly sealed tube. Okay, we're pumping it down now. We're sitting at about 70 microns and coming down. The diffusion pump hasn't kicked in yet. It's warming up. And it'll take it a few minutes to kick in. It takes about 20 minutes for it to get hot enough to start boiling. And then after that, the pressure will drop like a rock. Right now, the pressure drop is limited by the outgassing of the system. It's not the pump, it's just that we have so much outgassing going on that um, the jumps in the pressure are coming from the diffusion pump heating up. As it heats up, it liberates gas from the oil, and that causes the pressure to jump up occasionally, but it immediately comes right back down. As the pump reaches operating temperature, then it'll, it'll just all of a sudden just start dropping down into um, where that meter reads zero. Now this is reading the baritron right now. We're not using the high vacuum gauge. Until the diffusion pump kicks in, we'll be using the baritron. Now, while we're waiting for the diffusion pump to come down, we're going to go ahead and bake this tube. We have to bake it at 900 degrees to 1000 degrees to drive out all of the gas from the elements. To do that, we use the bake-out oven. This is a homemade bake-out oven. Um, it's just made out of some... Uh, it's an old coffee grinder or something like that. Um, inside, I think that's probably in the view of the camera. There's a spiral of uh, nichrome wire 
is set to where when it has about 120 volts on it, the temperature inside gets up to 1,000 degrees. We have a uh, controller, a temperature controller, that uh, uses feedback from a, uh, a thermocouple so that we can set the temperature to anything that we want. This one's calibrated directly in degrees, so it's um, 0 to 1,000 degrees. Now, it's hollow all the way down through, so I'm going to take it and I set it down over the tube. Being careful not to screw the tube up. We have a little plate that fits down underneath that goes around the, uh, we have a cutout for the uh, evacuation tube. That closes the bottom off. Okay. Let's plug that in. Okay, it's turning red hot inside there. I don't know if the camera will show that or not. Our pressure is now down to 30 microns. That's just from the mechanical pump. Our diffusion pump hasn't started up yet. Okay, the diffusion pump is starting up. You can see the pressure is down to 10 microns now. The diffusion pump is coming in. It's kicking in. You see how fast that pressure is dropping? Down to 8 microns. The diffusion pump will pump on the order of 1,000 to 10,000 times faster than the mechanical pump. Down to 4 microns now. But the outgassing is so prodigious that even the diffusion pump is, uh, you know, it's, it's right at its capacity right now. But as, as the outgassing uh, slows down, as, it, as all the gas is pumped out, then the, the uh, pump will take it on down all the way to 10 to the minus fifth torque. Okay, we're down less than two microns now. We're now at the limits of the Baratron. We're down below one micron. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll switch over to the ion gauge. All right, we'll turn on the ion gauge. We'll set the range up to one micron. Okay, and we'll turn on the filament. Okay, the ion gauge is working. We raise the range. Okay, at 10 to the minus 4th tor, full scale, we're reading down below 10 to the minus 4th tor. We'll go to 10 to the minus 5th. Okay, we're reading vacuum now. The va diffusion pump is fully working. We're reading 4 times 10 to the minus 5th tor. As the outgassing continues, we'll be on down, even below, we'll be into the upper 10 to the minus 6th torr range. So now we just leave this sit here for about four hours to bake. Okay, we've been pumping for about three and a half hours. Uh, the pressure is now down to oh, a little over four times 10 to the minus 6th torr. Um, th this system will go down into the area of two to three, but this is plenty down far enough for the tube, so we're finished now. I've unplugged the oven about a half hour ago, so it's cool. We'll just go ahead and remove it from the tube. The next thing to do is to process the filament to go ahead and get it to emit. And we use this power supply to do that. Okay, I've got the filament leads up to the filament, plate lead to the plate. Right now I've got the B plus at zero. I'm just going to go ahead and heat the filament up. 
and this will drive the air out of the filament. The, the filament uh, tungsten is just like any other tungsten, it has air in it when it um, is manufactured. We have to drive that out of there by heating it up. So we let that sit there for a few seconds. Okay, now I'm going to bring the plate voltage up to see if we get any emission. Okay, we're still not getting any emission. I'm going to set it to about 90 volts and I'm going to bring the plate voltage up. I mean the filament voltage up. Okay, there we're getting emission. Okay, this is our plate current. Okay. We're getting tremendous emission now. Now the outgassing has brought the pressure up in the bulb slightly above what it was, above the 10 to the minus 6, uh, uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 6 core. So it takes time for it to bleed down through the, uh, the, the resistance of the uh, evacuation tube. So it will take a few seconds for it to get down. But once it gets down there, then um, we're going to have emission with voltages as low as 22 volts. I'm going to put it, let's put it at 22 volts. I'll bring the filament back up. And we're getting emission. We're getting about four milliamps now. We got three volts on the filament. We're getting one milliamp with eleven volts on the, on the plate, and a half a milliamp with about five volts on the plate. And it goes way up there when we get to past forty-five volts. And that's, being, that's just acting like a diode. Now, to process the filament, we have to let it sit with some current flowing through it. You're just going to let that sit there. Let it outgas. What it's doing is it's outgassing that tungsten. Whenever the gas gets pressure comes up in the tube, then the emission will drop. It, it's a surprising amount of resistance from the bulb down to the vacuum system between the, the uh, because of this uh, pressure drop in this uh, evacuation tube. Because the, the gauge is still reading about 5 times 10 to the minus 6 down below. But that's reading the, uh, the inlet pressure, not the pressure in the tube. Because we have this, this, uh, this conductance uh, resistance of this uh, evacuation stem to, to put up. All right, let's see if we can get some emission out of this thing. Okay. getting 3 milliamps with 45 volts. The voltage isn't that critical. At 22, we're still getting 2 milliamps. Okay, that's pretty well outgassed. We, we, we're sitting with 22 volts. We have about pretty constant one milliamp of uh, plate current. So um, we've uh, just about outgassed it completely. Now the getter will continue to absorb gas and um, keep the emission high. The next thing to do is to flash the getter and then seal it off.